Hello everyone, welcome to The Ranting Shop, it's me Melissa. Today we're going to be talking about the most recent episode of Puts a Ring on It and this particular episode is episode 9 and it's called Family Affair. So we're going to start off with, we only have two couples to really work with this episode considering last episode Darian decided to finally tell the truth and Alexia was done with him. So we're only focusing on Jessica and Eric and Laurent and Sean today. However, I want to start with Jessica and Eric. So Jessica and Eric it left off when jessica was basically saying that she felt very much unappreciated during mother's day because eric didn't even think to give her a cheap card showing his appreciation he didn't do anything for her and he mentioned feeling or apologizing to her and wanting her to acknowledge his apology and she said and according to him she didn't but dr nicole pointed out that the same way Jessica felt unappreciated, unseen, and all these things during Mother's Day is the same way he feels when she doesn't acknowledge his apology. So in actuality, they're all wanting the same things. And as Dr. Nicole keeps saying over and over again, the best thing that they could do for their relationship is to listen to each other and come to the realization that they want the same things and work towards the same thing. It's not like they want different things and they're clashing and and all these things yes they do want different things in in regards to the amount of children she doesn't really want children especially not in an unstable environment but he does and she feels unseen he feels unseen she feels hurt he feels hurt. it's just that they don't communicate that to each other and as a result they clash all the time and it becomes this very petty tit for tat oh you did this so i'm doing that you did this i'm doing that and it's very much childish so they talk about the interaction with Leilani and Eric and Jessica mentions the fact that she doesn't like the touchy-feely vibe that Leilani, the flirty vibe that Leilani gives to Eric. She doesn't appreciate it. However, Jessica doesn't feel like Eric listens to her and doesn't feel like Eric takes her feelings and emotions into account because his reaction to that was that, oh, I didn't believe or I didn't think it would be that bad or I didn't think it would be so touchy-feely but at the end of the day if your partner is telling you that she's not comfortable with something the logical thing to do is to listen to her and adjust accordingly not to ignore what she said and do something anyway only to find out that what she was saying was true it's just that you didn't want to acknowledge it okay and that just shows a lot about how eric feels about jessica it's very clear that he doesn't really respect her like that so even if she says something she might be telling the truth about it but he's gonna ignore it because he just does not seem to really respect her viewpoints on certain things and he feels like maybe she's wrong and so he wants to do what he wants to do regardless of that so jessica talks about her interaction with sean and she says unlike her current relationship with eric she feels heard she feels seen and that is something that is very important to her she's accustomed to people praising her and loving her for her looks for for what she can offer look wise and she says she wants more than that she wants to be seen and sean sees her according to what she says so just because of that and because of this refreshing vibe she gets from sean she decided to go on another date with him eric will also go on another date with leilani because he said he feels comfortable with leilani things he can talk to jessica about he feels like he could talk about to leilani and so he's gonna go on another date with her then we have the situation of them talking in the car about the meeting and what progressed or was spoken about in the meeting they talked about Alexia and Darian's situation, of course, Jessica feels like she would not put up with it at all. But at the end of the day, it's easy to say what you're not going to put up with. If you're in that situation, it comes, it tends to be a different thing. But speaking on the outside, looking in, she was like, if it was me, I was not going to put up with it. She feels sorry for Alexia. And then the conversation moves on to Jess. Um, she doesn't feel like her and Eric are consistent enough in, in what they want, in, in, their relationship going smoothly one moment it's good the next moment it's bad and she just wants a more consistent situation erica and elani they go in a sort room date and it's a very intimate it's a very intimate space and they are wearing not much and a big robe and they talk about the, the process and they talk about getting what they have gotten from the process thus far Eric talks about he's able to see what he can do, what he cannot do, able to see what he's not getting and what he wants to get from his relationships. Leilani, of course, is very touchy, very feely, very affectionate, and it's something that he's not pushing away. Like, he's welcoming it. He might be uncomfortable. He might know in his mind that this might not be 
right considering he does have another relationship but he's not pushing her away as well that just shows that he probably does like it but maybe he feels like he's supposed to not like it because he's in a relationship with somebody else remember prior to that did jessica mention that she doesn't like the fact that lilani is so touchy and flirty however it's clear that he didn't really take what jessica was saying into consideration because he continued to encourage the touchiness of lilani so that just speaks to the fact that he does not really listen to jessica and what she says and how she feels and we will find out why later on now we get into some deeper things after the date of course they convene in the house jessica and eric and they start talking about eric's relationship with his mom eric feels as if his mom is never satisfied with anything that he does for her if he for example gets her a house she's gonna complain that the house is empty so she expects a lot from eric and is never satisfied or appreciative of what eric gives her and jessica feels like it's so important for her to for her that Eric mends the relationship he has with his mom. And I feel like Eric has somewhat given up, but he is willing to perhaps give it another try. We will later come to the method with which he decides to communicate with his mom. Then we learned a little bit about Jessica and where Jessica came from and what makes her her. And Come to find out jessica is adopted but we knew that from last episode jessica is an adopted child she was adopted by her aunt her aunt raised her her mom was a prostitute and end up getting pregnant by a black man and her mom's parents kind of ostracized jessica because they were racist and the fact that jessica's father was black was a big point of contention as to why jessica's mom's family didn't want her so and Jessica's mom didn't want her. So Jessica felt useless. She felt unwanted. And she's so very appreciative that her aunt took her in and raised her. And for that alone, she feels so... It's so important for her to have a solid relationship with her family. And it's important for Eric to have a solid relationship with his mom. Because she never got to have that with her mom. So she feels like if there's an opportunity to mend things, mend it. Because... She never got the opportunity to mend hers. She became a dancer, Jessica did, and she felt like her mom being a prostitute kind of made it so that dancing was something that was in her to do because her mom did it. And she talked about the stigma of dancers and a lot of people think dancers are whores and prostitutes and just sex workers in that regard. And she was saying that a lot of dancers are very business-minded, goal-oriented and that stigma needs to be changed and that is true i have heard stories about a lot of dancers having degrees or working their way through college while dancing and um i feel like it's something that society has to work on in regards to just spreading some positive light on dancing as just a very legal means of making money you know and um eric feels like they will or should be able to take positive steps forward as far as their relationship is concerned then we move we move over to jessica and sean sean says jessica is everything he wants he come jessica compares sean to eric and it's like how come eric is not as emotional as sean is how come eric is not as comfortable with expressing himself as sean is and at the end of the day the answer to that is well we have learned that he has a very tumultuous relationship with his mom and as a result he is not as emotional or comfortable sharing emotion as sean is um eric jessica asked sean if we were to end the dates right now how would you feel and he said he would be unfulfilled and he would feel as if you know something that could have progressed into more did not get the chance to do that and he uh, he cried a little bit and he said that he just wants jessica to be happy and um of course jessica admires sean for that and wish eric was just like sean in that regard as for whether i think sean is just playing a role and buttering jessica perhaps perhaps um do i think that he likes jessica he does he probably does um do i think that there has been enough time for him to really get to know jessica no you know it's just a run of the mill couple dates where you feel like the person is perfect you know so it goes back to the convening of you know the meeting and everything and we get to know a little bit about eric and his relationship with his mom and how he treats jessica and he feels like he just wants wants 
to he just wants things to be about him because at some point when he got the nfl career and he started making the money it became about helping everybody around him and it became less about him being able to help himself and so he just feels like he gives and gives and gives and gets nothing in return and um he wants things to be about him and he decided in regards to his mom he's gonna write his mom a letter he decided a letter was best because then there would be no back and forth she would just have no choice but to listen read how he feels from his point of view and just take it in and keep it and learn to just understand it as opposed to going back and forth with him and you know disregarding his feelings and all that so i think that is a positive step in the right direction for eric um <clears throat> I think what Dr. Nicole was trying to get him to see was he should not see Jessica in the frame or in the lens of his mom. Jessica and his mom are different people. You should treat Jessica like Jessica and treat his mom like his mom. The danger with Eric is that within his relationship, he's treating Jessica like Jessica is his mother. And the quicker he decides or makes the effort to separate his mom and Jessica, the better it will be for Jessica and his relationship moving forward. Jessica again talks about her adoption and how it is so important for him to build a relationship with his mom because she didn't have that. So hopefully we're going to see how their situation goes moving forward. It looks as if he will go on another date with Leilani. We're going to see how that goes. We know Leilani is very touchy and you know that that is a boundary that Jessica has set. But it doesn't seem as if Sean or sorry, Eric is really sticking to those boundaries. So we'll see next episode. So now we're going to talk about LaRonda and Sean. Now, LaRonda and Sean, during the meeting, he called his date scary. But then he came to the realization that the date doesn't have to be scary and that it could just be talking and he should or could trust himself, you know. And um, he said they could just let the conversations flow. Like everything doesn't have to be sexual. Everything doesn't have to build up to some sexual thing. You could just simply get to know each other, go on a innocent date and just know each other everything doesn't have to be sexual but considering he probably never did that in his past he doesn't know how to but it seemed as if he's learning now Lorenda and Derek Lorenda talks about similarities she has with Derek they're both career people they're both in corporate America and Dr. Nicole was like this is the first time you look nervous talking about a date and I just feel like the nervousness we saw from LaRonda is her not wanting to ruffle Sean's feathers. We know that Sean could be extremely emotional. We understand that Sean could blow things out of proportion. So I understand why LaRonda looked so nervous. But um, I don't think it's necessarily because she's feeling the date so much more than Sean. I just feel like it's because she's trying to err on the side of caution and she's trying not to ruffle Sean's feathers because we know how that could go. And I feel like her accepting dates from Derek has definitely caused a level of conflict within their relationship and she's just trying for that not to be the case and that's probably why she's nervous she's trying to strike a balance between wanting to do what's best for her and wanting to do what's best for Sean and a lot of the times it clashes because what you want to do for yourself does not align with what somebody else wants you to do for them um Lorenda decides to go on a foot date with Derek and um of course Sean is taking it not very nicely because he feels like if you go on another date with this man, it has to be a situation where feelings, emotions are starting to develop. And again, he, he says that he's starting to see beyond progressing to sex with dates, but I don't think he really in, has internalized that. I feel like he still feels like dates have to progress to something more serious. And that's something he has to work on within himself, you know. It's something he says he realizes, but I don't think it's something he actually realizes. It could just be that Loranda wants to know more. It doesn't necessarily equate to Loranda having feelings for this man, you know. But people have noticed that they see that a change in Loranda as far as her interaction with Sean is concerned. A lot of people feel as if Loranda and Sean's just their dynamic has changed. And we see that... Um, Lorenda looks a little bit more distant, a little bit more irritated, a little bit more closed off to Sean. And that might be the case. Uh, they talk about the family dynamic. Of course, Sean, we see Lorenda catering to Sean again, giving him some cold water. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with catering to your man, but I feel like it's a bit much. It just goes into the whole narrative of um, Sean coddling, her coddling Sean and holding his hands and rubbing his feet and bringing him food and it's a bit much you know and um 
it's like giving him the cow it's like what's the point in him marrying you if you're already giving him everything he needs um they talk about sean's really eric's really sean's relationship with his parents he has a very tumultuous relationship with his dad and he feels as if he saw a lot of domestic violence in his home and um, a lot of alcoholism and he feels as if he does not want to chase a relationship with his dad he feels like if his dad doesn't want it then he doesn't want it and it's just it's just something that he's gonna have to deal with or leave unresolved but loranda feels as if she cannot move forward into a marriage situation if sean hasn't come to terms with or dealt with the situation with his dad um and that is true because if he has some unresolved feelings about his father that's most likely going to translate into the marriage and that wouldn't translate for the better it would translate for the worst so addressing that is something that i do believe that sean should do Loranda, on the other hand, has an opposite relationship with her dad. Her dad is her world. Her dad is the most precious thing to her. And so in that regard, she can't really relate to Sean and his dysfunctional relationship with his father. Um, she says if he doesn't face the issues and heal, it will replicate itself within their marriage. So Loranda and Derek go on a boxing date and they talk a little bit more about their commonalities and stuff like that. And a lot of things she's seeing in, in Derek, like his ability to be open, his ability to communicate and stuff like that, she does not see with Sean. Um, Loranda has a light, a tight knit family, but Sean does not and doesn't really care to have, he doesn't really care to have a relationship with his dad just because he feels as if his dad doesn't want a relationship with him. So it's kind of a way to self, a self preservation mode you know let me keep myself from hurt let me save myself from hurt and not get into something i know that would cause pain to me however um dr nicole said that there's a difference between reconciliation and resolution for reconciliation you only need one person but for resolution you need the other party but dr nicole was telling sean that it's actually okay to resolve and heal on your own you don't require the permission of your dad for you to move forward and heal you know and the sooner he realizes that the more he's gonna not feel trapped by his dad and his choices so as dr nicole said your parents choices are not about you and it's easy for you to say of course it's about you because you feel your you are your parents world but most of the time your parents do things for themselves because at the end of the day before you they were individuals before you they were selfish before you they had their own needs and wants and you coming into the picture doesn't suddenly make things about you so um dr nicole was trying to get him to understand that the quicker you come to the realization that your parents do things for themselves and the things that your parents do are not in conjunction to you the more you're able to set yourself free from whatever you feel like they don't do for you um dr nicole said you can't want um people to set you free you have to set yourself free you know and um that is a word that is a complete word it just draws into conclusion that whole theory of closure and um wanting to have that final talk so that you could close the chapter on things in actuality you don't need that we don't need closure as soon as you come to the realization that what you saw that person do is what that person is as soon as we understand this the quicker it is for us to move on okay um Loranda, although she's impressed with her date, she decided not to go on a, uh, on a third date with Derek. And I think she did that because she wanted to just keep the peace within her relationship. I feel like every moment she decides to accept another date with Derek, more, more contention brews within her relationship. And so to prevent that, she decided to, you know, keep the peace and to let just let it go. Sean also decided to not go on another date with the person. What's her name? Whatever, Layla, Le, Le, whatever her name is, Taji, whatever, I don't know. And so it was the same reason to keep the peace within their situation. You know, for me, they took the easy way out, but that's their business, you know. Of course, they talk about their dates. Jessica feels as if, I forgot to talk about Jessica and what she said about her dates with Eric. Jessica felt as if she was able to see genuine emotion from Sean. She had never seen her man cry. and not cry out of negativity but cry out of positivity she had never seen that every time she sees emotion from eric it is negative emotion you know and um that's something to see about eric and his feelings um then we go back to sean we see in the previews sean is shopping for a wedding ring loranda is wearing wedding gowns it seems as if they're gonna be possibly accepting she's gonna possibly be accepting a 
um, proposal from Sean. However, we don't know. Previews are deceptive. However, as I said before, you guys, these people aren't fooling anybody. As far as Jessica and Eric is concerned, it does seem as if they're going to go through. They're going to go through some choppy times. And um, however, you can't really take editing and previews seriously because they end up being the opposite of what we see um it makes us feel as if sean and Noranda are gonna get proposed and happily ever after it's making us seem like jessica and erica are gonna break up whatever the case is that might very well be the opposite it might very well be the reciprocal it could also be that they both decide to accept the proposal whether they accept it now or not at the end of the day as i told you guys before they're, t they're still together jessica sean together I'm sorry, Sean and Rhonda are still together no matter what you try to do on social media. And Jessica and Eric are still together. Whether they're engaged, we don't know, but they're still together. Um, then we're going to talk about, I forgot to talk about Alexia. The girls decided to meet with Alexia. And Alexia, of course, was talking about the whole situation with Darian and Kai. She feels annoyed with, with, with Darian. She... Um, is trying to figure out where will his morals i think he's trying to figure out where his morals will where kai's morals will but at the end of the day people don't hold the same moral grounds as you do you might think that everybody has the same moral compass but they really don't and the sooner we come to the realization that everybody's not the same did not grow up the same do not hold the same things in high regard the more we are able to set ourselves free she's confused um, as far as Derek Darian's actions, because she's trying to figure out why would you have sex with this woman after she said to you that she has feelings for you? Don't you realize that when you go into that rabbit hole, that it's gonna be difficult for you to let that stuff go? You know, but at the end of the day, Darian didn't care about Kai's feelings. All he wanted to do was, if you're gonna offer me sex, I'm gonna take it. You know, as as he said last episode, he thought Kai was there to ease his feelings. That's all you need to know. He just wanted to use Kai for what Kai could give him. Whether Kai stated her feelings or not, he was going to use her regardless. You know, it was up to Kai to be able to decipher whether she was going to end up hurting herself or not. She clearly didn't decipher things very well because it didn't work out in her favor. She feels embarrassed, is disappointed in Darian. Um, the women, of course, are there for her and everything. Um, she said that it was, he said that, Darian said it was a mistake. And men always lie talking about it was a mistake. You willingly did something knowing the consequences of your actions. So how is that a mistake? That is a willing thing that you did. I hate how we like to blanket everything we do as mistakes. A mistake is something you did not knowing the consequences of your actions. But you knew, so stop calling things you willingly do a mistake. It's not a mistake. You wanted to do that. And... She says she feels free now from Darian. She's able to focus on herself. Praise the Lord for that. Don't ever go back to that man. He'll end up dragging you into the dirt. He'll end up dragging you straight to hell. So the quicker you could detach yourself from him and move on, the better for you. I'm happy for you, Alexia. It hurts now, but you're going to realize the more you, 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 you start to know about Darian, the, the more you start to really know about him, because it's clear that Alexia didn't really know who she was sleeping next to. The more she starts to know, the more she'll feel justified in letting him go. Because the more the rabbit hole goes deep. Between the exes coming out and sharing stuff about him. Between learning how he is, who he is as an individual. Take it for what it is and move on. Um, anyways, you guys, that's it for my review of Put a Ring on It. Season 2, Episode 9. Let me know what you guys think. The internet streets are hot. Um, people are writing on people's cars exes are coming out people are defending him people are admonishing him and the social media streets are hot um i'm gonna put i think i forgot to add something that he um allegedly posted a text message i'm assuming it's from kai kai basically saying that she wants him wants him to talk to her and all this blah yada 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 if kai decides to still be in a situation with darian knowing who he is knowing who he has shown her that's her business it's clear that kai doesn't really know how to navigate negativity she doesn't really seem to know how to leave negativity alone how to leave red flags as red flags and move on with her life um she has issues you guys um kai has very clear issues i would have respected kai more if she had not messed with daria if she had not continued to mess with daria you see you're in a you're in a very advantageous position of not getting yourself too entangled with this man instead you run for your life you're deciding to engage in that mess like come on kai kai come on like we 
I don't know, like, why would you do that? That just speaks to your lack of self-esteem. For you to want that for yourself, want this man for yourself. This man is no prize, period. And now I'm on Alexia's stream because it's like, I respect her more for letting that man go. I would have respected Kai if she had also let him go, but she decided to play a game and do a tit for tat thing and go for this man. Why? I don't know. Because he's no prize. But anyways, you guys, let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for other reviews from The Ranting Shop. It's me, Melissa. Bye. Stay tuned. See you later.